It's your boy Thomas back again with another rendition of Truth Be Told. <clears throat> now again, there isn't anything major going on in the news except for you know that this year is going to get crazy when the lefties go nuts when, you know, Trump becomes president again. They're going to lose their minds. Uh... Because they know they're not going to win. They may try to delete him. I don't know. That's a possibility. I wouldn't put it past the Democrats to try that. But anyways. Uh, the border crisis still going on. We have millions of illegal aliens coming into our country. And our government's not, they're not doing anything, they're allowing it to happen. And it's BS. Uh, I have no problem with someone coming over here legally. And adopting American values, morals and values. You know, if they assimilate it to our country's ideals... And become an actual an American. I have no problem with that. But if they're going to come over here and steal. Which is what they're doing. They're stealing from the American people. And 90% of those that are coming across the border. Are not even women and children. It's men. From foreign countries. Uh, a, a lot of them are from the cartels. Uh, a lot of them are from. Uh, men who come over here to invade and put in leftist ide ideology from other countries. Communism. So, they all need to go go back. We need to get rid of them. Plain and simple. Anyways, that's the only big stuff that's really going on. You know, of course the war is stupid war crap still going on, but other than that, that's it. Uh, <clears throat> so, I'm going to get to what I really want to talk to you about this week. Um, I watched Aquaman 2 not too long ago. And I told you I'd get to it this week. <clears throat> I went ahead and did Rebel Moon last week, which was a shit show. It sucked beyond everything. It was absolutely cringe. Um, Aquaman 2. Now, you're going to see a lot of reviews all over YouTube about this. Uh, they're all dogging and trashing the movie. Because of the turd. The turd is in it. She's not in it for very long. She has a few scenes. But her dialogue. She almost has no dialogue. Um, and for those of you who haven't seen this movie. Uh, you might not want to watch this video. Because I am going to go over a few things from the movie. So, a little bit of a spoiler alert. Because there are a few things in it that are a little bit cringe. Um, but for the most part, and I'll be honest, I really didn't think it was horrible. I didn't think the movie was horrible. A bunch of YouTubers are reviewing it just trashing it because of 
her being in it. Nobody likes Amber Turd. We already know this. We knew it was going to bomb because of her. Um, the second thing, which I've mentioned before, Jason Moma is not fucking Aquaman. He never was. He doesn't look anything like him. He's a piece of crap actor, too. I don't really care for Jason Moma. Uh, he's maybe done one or two good acting roles. The rest of his crap sucks. He he destroyed the Conan. He not even close to being a Conan. He trashed that fucking character. Um, anyways, that's my first complaint. You know, they could have got someone who actually looked like Aquaman. It's just ignorant. Ignorance. Now, he's supposed to do Lobo, which, honestly, he actually looks the part of Lobo. So that would be a good choice. But Aquaman, no, absolutely not. Obviously, they ended this because, you know, they're scrapping all Jack Snyder's crap anyway, which I didn't care for any of Jack Snyder's Justice League or any of it. A DC crap. I did. He goes way too fucking dark with it, and it's crap because it's not supposed to be that dark. If you've read any, I, I don't give a fuck who you are. You think you're some fucking comic guru. If you've read any of the fucking comics, you know for a fact that the original DC comics was not all super dark and heavy and, you know, got daddy is mommy and daddy issues and mentally fucked in the head shit. It's all this new woke crap that they've been putting out that does that shit. That's not DC. It never was. Same thing with Marvel. Marvel didn't, they didn't start out that way either. It's all the new crap. Since after 2000, they've been putting out that stupid, god-awful, oh, goth, fucking, you know, dark, fucking, menacing, psycho, psychopath crap in the comics. You know, along with, you know, all the you, fucking alphabet community crap and shit like that. Feminism crap. It, that's all been after 2000. That's not what the comics were. They were more lighthearted. You know, they were more adventure based. Not super dark and hard. You know, this bullshit. Even Batman wasn't that dark. I mean, he was a little dark, but he wasn't that fucking super dark. Anyways, moving on. Uh, yeah. So this movie, uh, there's a couple things, like, for instance, when they're showing him, he's, he has a son, supposedly. But from my understanding, I'm not huge into Aquaman, so I don't know all his backstory. But from what I was told, Aquaman didn't have a son. Uh, supposedly... I could be wrong in this. I haven't looked it up. I don't really care. Um, Black Mantis had a son, and he asked Aquaman to take care of him. And he eventually becomes Aqualad. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but apparently in this one he has a son with Turd, and for whatever reason, he's taking care of the kid. Like all the time. You see a couple of scenes of her with him at his home or some shit. 
with his dad, grandpa, who's taking care of the kid too. It's grandpa and daddy, not mommy, not grandma. It's grandpa and daddy, the guys. Now, you have one scene where Turd, you know, she does some type of like magic crap and makes her son piss in Jason Moba's fucking mouth. Like, it was cringe. It was like, why the, why the fuck are you showing him pissing in his fucking mouth? They do it twice. Once without her and then once with her doing it. And I'm just, but it makes no sense that he's the one who's taking care of the kid. You know, when she's the mother, she should be taking care of the fucking kid. You know, it just makes no sense. But anyways, uh, the CGI with their hair flowing in the water and shit looked absolutely terrible. I don't know what, what the fuck they did with the CGI shit, but the CGI, it's not just that. There's other scenes of other stuff, but... That was the worst, the hair flow crap in the water and shit. It was terrible looking. Absolutely cringe. It was like they just said, fuck it, you know. I don't It's just weird. Um, the guy who played Ocean Master, I can't even think of his name. Patrick something, I can't remember. He would have made a better Aquaman be honest uh, now they kind of write him off too it's just the ending is him chewing on a roach because they think that's a funny joke him like he'd eaten roaches because they went to some fucking island that doesn't exist where everything's been made into uh like giant insects and giant fucking mouse or not mouse what the fly trap plants and shit like come on give me a fucking break and then they're looking for this you know toxic fucking uh, energy shit uh, it just came out of the blue it's supposed to be some ancient form of energy that the Atlanteans fucking found and then stopped using because they figured out it was too toxic for the environment. They, they're having a hard time finding this shit. And I'm like, what? Did the fucking volcano that's fucking spewing gobs of fucking green ass gas, toxic gas in the atmosphere, have any clue? And the, the vast majority of this was about fucking climate. Uh, uh, you know, fucking the climate, you know, fucking overheating, whatever. You know, weather crap. You know, I was, fuck off with the whole climate shit. It's such fake shit. The science the studies have shown that fucking you know, fucking global warming, what the fuck ever they want to call it. It happens. It happens all the fucking time. It's been happening for millions of years. It's nothing new. It has nothing to do with humans. Does it help that we are putting carbons in the atmosphere? Well, fuck no, of course not. But that's not what's causing climate con or Global warming? Fucking idiots. But anyways. Uh, yeah, that's basically what this fucking movie's about. They put an emphasis on that shit. It's just so dumb and cringe. Because they got it wrong. They're misinformed. So, anyways... Aquaman has to go bust out his brother out of prison so his brother can help him stop uh, their uncle. Or uh, not really uncle, but you know, an ancient 
blood relative who's kind of like an uncle, which he turned the city into fucking... He becomes an, like a leech, turns itself undead, and turns his whole fucking city into undead because they didn't want to stop using the whatever the fuck it's called, toxic energy. Because it made them the most powerful uh, city out of all the cities of Atlantis. You know, there was like... Or kingdoms of Atlantis. There was like seven of them or some shit like that. Um, anyways. They gotta go stop him. Now this ancient guy had his own trident that he made. An evil trident. To counteract the Lanthians trident. Uh, apparently one... Uh, what's his name? Um, Dolph Lundgren, who plays one of the kings of this, these kingdoms, he has his own weird looking trident too. But anyways, this trident somehow possesses Mantis, uh, and he basically becomes the ancient king or whatever, and he's out to destroy Atlantis. So they get a big fight at the end. Mantis tells him to go fuck himself. He's going to die anyway like an, a dumbass. And fucking, you know, he, like he's supposed to come back, you know, when he falls down into a pit. Whatever. Anyways. Uh, and at the very end, he basically does the whole Iron Man speech. Oh, we're Atlanteans. We're here. Hey, guess what? I'm Aquaman. Woo! Like an idiot. It's just dumb. It's so stupid. That ending. But otherwise, for the most part, it was watchable. I didn't think it was that horrible. It just... Some of the shit was just dumb in the movie. Not all of it, it just, they could, the CGI could have been better. They could have chosen uh, an actual decent actor to play and actually look the part of Aquaman. Um, I don't know, I didn't think Mantis is a, the way this dude plays Mantis is just dumb. I don't think he played a good Mantis at all. I think it was terrible. Anyways, that was my thoughts on Aquaman 2. You, of course, can watch it and formulate your own opinion. That's just my opinion. Uh, I give you some facts about the movie, why it's not the greatest at all. It, it was pretty bad, but it wasn't horrible. You know, it was watchable. But it, it just, it could have been done so much better from the beginning when they first did the first Aquaman. It should have been something completely different. But anyways, that's my thoughts on it. Let me know what you think. Uh, let's get on to your B-movie reviews. Movie Holics, let's get on to your B movie reviews. This week is Fantasy Week.
Now, I went ahead and done something I haven't done in a while. I went ahead and picked a couple of cartoons to do. Uh, my problem with the fantasy genre is that unless it's like Lord of the Rings or which I'll eventually get to it's just everyone's pretty much seen those uh, if it's not Lord of the Rings and then it's you know your sword sorcery movies from the 80s uh, which there were a ton of them which I've pretty much covered most of them uh, that's all the high fantasy that you see they can do it Hollywood can do it they just don't do it because it costs too much to make all the costumes and stuff like that yada 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 you know uh, BS you know uh, you know the, the original Dungeons and Dragons was cheesy and, uh, but it was decent the new Dungeons and Dragons, the Honor Among Thieves, was just so god awful, cringe, and woke. You know, it was just terrible, terrible movie. Uh, but like I said, they could do high fantasy, they just don't. Um, most of the fantasy genre is based on kids' crap, like kitty shit, you know, teeny bopper, little kids fantasy movies and I just uh I'm so sick of that like give me some more high fantasy like Lord of the Rings not this kitty crap but anyways that's the problem with most of your fantasy and it's really hard to find decent actual high fantasy type movies um so you you know, if it's not the kitty fancy, it's something whimsical. Like some type of comedy or, you know, something like that. Um, anyways, I went with a couple cartoons this time around. Uh, the first one is an older movie. And it's done by Disney, which is kind of shocking. You know, because... The type of animation in this movie is not Disney style. So it's a little strange. But it was done in 1985 and it made about 21 million. It's called The Black Cauldron. Now I know it's been out for a while, a long time. I've just never seen it. Uh, someone, voice actors, uh, Grant Barsley. And Susan Sheridan were the voice actors, the princess and the boy in the movie. Um, the basic story is you have this adopted father who takes in this lad and then makes him kind of a farmer. But he tells him that he has to guard and protect this one particular little pig, female pig. Because she's special. Well, at the beginning of the movie, you find out why she's special. There's a, of course, a tyrant king, evil king, called the Horn King, who's basically turned himself into a leech. And he's going around conquering all the lands and uh, various kingdoms around. Um... They decide to spy on him. The old man does. Whatever reason why this old man is wanting, you know, what does... It's like, why? Why? He's like a farmer. Don't make no sense. Anyways, he has the pig, which kid, for whatever reason, has the power to see visions or whatever in water. Or liquid because it dips it as the pig dips its face into this water and they're able to see these visions and they see that the the evil lich horn king is going after something called the black cauldron which is an ancient device a magical device uh, that allows 
uh, the user, warlock, sorcerer, whatever, magician, to conjure up an army of the dead. So, and it's supposedly lost. They don't know where it's supposed to be at, where it's located. But when it, the pig sees this vision, supposedly the Horn King all of a sudden knows about the pig. <coughs> so, he tells a little boy who's a pig farmer, take the pig, guard it with your life, and run away and hide. Now the boy, of course, he fantasizes about being like this great warrior, blah, 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 throughout the movie, which he's not. Um, the pig runs away from him, gets caught by the evil king. The boy goes inside the evil king's castle how he gets in there. Sneaks in there with all the... This army. That makes no sense. But he does. He gets caught inside the castle. Uh, the pig gets away. He's able to get the pig out. Uh, before the pig reveals anything really to... Uh, the evil king. Horn king. But he gets thrown in the dungeon. Well, this princess shows up out of nowhere, supposedly caught by the king, too. But yeah, she's able to freely roam the dungeons and, for whatever reason, finds this trap door in his fucking cell and, you know, helps him escape. Now, there's this little magical light that she uses to guide the way which she doesn't explain how she, she has any magical powers or anything like that. She just has this magical willow, or wisp, willow wisp, or whatever hell you want to call them, that lights the way for them. It makes no sense. Anyways, while they're trying to escape, they run across a... Uh, ancient burial tomb of the first king that owned the castle. Had a magical sword. He takes the magical sword and he's able to defeat a bunch of the guards and they're able to escape. Uh, they also run into some old geezer in the dungeons that they help, ex you know, help out and escape with them. Which don't make any sense why they have him along don't make any sense. I don't I didn't get the story of why he's with them. But he has a busted heart that he he's some type of musician or some shit. You know, a bard. He goes with them. Uh they eventually run across the pig again who's held up by these fairies who try to help them out. Uh, to stop the evil king by getting the black cauldron. They tell him where the black cauldron is. The black cauldron is held by three terrible witches who want to make a bargain for the magical sword for the black cauldron. Now they tell him in order to uh, use the black cauldron to stop the evil king, someone has to sacrifice himself and jump in the black cauldron and give up his soul. But they have to do it willingly. Um, they have another character who's like a little... I don't know what the hell you call him. It almost looks like a, a koala bear kind of looking character. Anyways, he becomes a friend. and He eventually jumps in the cauldron to stop the evil king. Well, the evil king and the boy get in a fight over the black cauldron, and the evil king gets sucked into the black cauldron and dies. Uh, they eventually trick the witches into bringing back his friend, but they get to keep not only the magical sword, but they get the black cauldron back. And 
because of, apparently the black cauldron is indestructible. They can't destroy. That was their first intention, but apparently they can't do that. So that's why they had to sacrifice someone. But he gets his friend, little koala bear friend back. And that's basically the end of the story. They stop the Glitch King, blah, blah, blah. They all become friends. They all go home and live happily ever after. That's the end of the movie. Uh, like I said, it was different. Like It's not something you would normally see Disney do. Something to do with the undead. It just... It, didn't, it really wasn't normal for Disney. Uh, was it an okay movie? Eh. It was okay. It wasn't the best car of cartoons, but it wasn't terrible. Uh, it was watchable for a cartoon. Uh, check it out if you want, if, especially if you're into cartoons and you're into Disney classics. Uh, this this one isn't too bad. Uh, I, get, I give it, uh, you know, I actually give it a thumbs up and a thumbs down. It wasn't horrible, it wasn't great, you know, but it was a decent watch for a cartoon. You know how I feel about cartoons. I'm not a big cartoon fan. Uh, anyways, let's move on to your next one. The next one I watch uh, was done in 1994 and it made about 13 million. Uh, and it was called The Page Master. Now this starred Macaulay Culkin and Christopher Lloyd. Uh, right after he did like the whole Home Alone crap. Uh, basically, the story is you have this boy who he's a wimp. And, you know, he's a scaredy cat. You know, he don't want to take any risk or chances. You know, he's real careful about stuff. He repeats statistics all the time. Uh, he gets bullied a lot because of it. His dad's frustrated with him because he, you know, he, he's not like a normal kid. He don't, you know, he's not getting dirty and running around playing with friends and blah, blah, blah. Anyways, he gets in this, he's supposed to go to the hardware store and get some nails for his dad. And all along the way, he gets into a storm he runs into this library, which Christopher Lloyd is running. For whatever reason, he's the only one there. Uh, Christopher Lloyd issues him a library card, but then, you know, the kid just tells him he wants to be able to use the phone and call his parents. He's not there for library books. So, Christopher Lloyd tells him where the phone is. He's got to go way back through, like, this maze of books, which is dumb when the front desk is right there. It made no sense. He's got to go through these maze of books to find the library card. Now, he runs into this area in, like, the center of the library that has this huge... You know, art piece up on top of the uh, dome or whatever. It looks like a dome. It has like four pictures on it and then in the center is a picture of the page master which looks like a wizard. Uh, he slips and falls uh, because he's soaking wet. Uh, he drips the water. He slips and falls. Falls right in the middle of the, the area. When he wakes up, or, or well, he kind of knocks himself out, and he starts dreaming that he becomes a cartoon. Now, he's along the way, he meets a book called Fantasy, he meets a book called Adventure, and he meets a book called Horror. And they kind of like travel around, do, you know, they go through the, uh, you know, some of the books... Uh, uh, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, uh, uh, Moby Dick, Treasure Island, 
And I can't remember the last one. It's something to do with a dragon. Uh, he's got to go through all these adventures and crap to get to the exit. He's looking for the exit sign to get out of the library. And the books are telling him, take us with you. Check us out. You know, since you have a library card, take us with you. Uh, when he eventually does come to, uh, yeah, after he finds the exit, Christopher Lloyd's there and he tells him he, he's going to allow him to check out the books. Even though he's only supposed to check out two, he allows him to check out all three books. And then, uh, you know, McCulloch and Culkin, you know, his character, he goes home, falls asleep in his new uh, treehouse which he didn't want to go in because he was afraid of heights. But now that he's dreamt that, you know, he could face heights, you know, face other fears, you know, when he was dreaming on his adventure, uh, he's falling asleep in the treehouse. His mom and dad have been looking for him all day. And they find him in the treehouse. And instead of waking him up and taking him inside and putting him to bed, they just cover him up and let him sleep outside in the treehouse and go inside. And that's literally the end of the movie. Uh, again, was it a good movie? Yeah, it was okay for a cartoon, but again, it's real kiddie-ish. Because it's made for kids, obviously. I just, I'm not a big cartoon fan and I'm not a big kitty fan you know kitty fantasy I just don't like it uh, but for a kids flick it was okay so what do I think about the page master well it was okay for it's a kitties movie check it out if you want it wasn't horrible but it wasn't really that great either uh, thumbs up thumbs down is what it is uh, that's all I have for you this week if you want to leave your thoughts about what I talked about earlier in the video please tell me leave them down in the comment section down below I'd love to hear from you uh, if you could think of any underrated B rated type movies uh, something you may think I've never heard of before go ahead and leave your suggestions down in the comment section down below and I'll get to reviewing them as soon as I can um, so until next time I told you you'd be told the truth and you've just been told <laughs>